Welcome back. This is lesson nine of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session one, and we will talk about pandas. So this is the last lesson for session one. Took a bit longer than I expected. And yeah, let's let's start. Pandas is a library for manipulating tabular data in Python. So um, by now, hopefully you have installed everything, including pandas. And again, like in case of NumPy, we use an alias for referring to pandas. So we import pandas SPD. So the main abstraction, the main data structure we use in pandas is called the data frame, which is basically a table. So let's create a simple one. We will use a data set that I prepared uh, specifically for this session. So I take it uh, from uh, GitHub repo that you'll find the link uh, in the description. So this is a data set. This is how it looks like. So this is a subset of a data set that we will use uh, for the next uh, session uh, for predicting the price of a car. So it has five cars. Um, and these are the characteristics of a car. Make, model, year, engine horsepower, number of cylinders, transmission type, vehicle style, and this is the price. So we have the, the data in this format. So this is a list of lists. And then we have a separate variable that uh, defines the, um, the columns. So let's, let me copy it and uh, paste it here. So again, so this is a list of lists. So each sub list of this list is a row in the table. So each row is a car. And then uh, for the first column here, it's make the second one model year engine so uh, horsepower and so on so this is uh, now we can turn it into a data frame so for that we uh, create a data frame using this uh, this uh, function data frame it's a constructor so if we just in create it with data it doesn't know what the columns are so it just puts a zero one two three four because it doesn't know what this column means mean and we can let it know what each of the column means by using a special parameter columns and we can say that it should be equal to columns so basically if we do this then pandas knows that okay for so this is make this is model year and so on so let's save it into a data frame. So usually I call data frames DFs. And yeah, it's not the only way you can create a data frame. There are many other ways. So for example, again, if we go to this GitHub repo, so it can be, so this is like a more compact way. So here uh, we don't uh, mention the name of the column in every row. So we just mentioned it once at the at the end, but it's also possible to um, have a list of dictionaries. So a dictionary, so this is a Python dictionary. And then here we basically say, we explicitly specify the value for each of the columns. So this is first car, then this is the second car, and we have uh, many cars like that. And uh, yeah, so if we have a list of dictionaries, we can also use them to create a data frame. So let me paste it. And uh, so again, PD data frame. And then all we need to provide is just this list of dictionaries. And then, so here we don't specify, we don't provide uh, the names of columns. It just infers them and the names of columns from the dictionaries. So because we have the, the keys here and the values. So, um, Pandas uses keys as the column names. So let's write it to a data frame. This is a really small data frame, but what I usually do when I read a larger data frame is the first uh, thing I do is look at the first couple of rows. So yeah, well, for that we for that I use the head method, which returns the first uh, uh, rows. So since our data frame is quite small. It returns the first five rows. Uh, but yeah, we can say, let's return me only the first two rows. And then, yeah. So this is one of the first thing I do after loading a data frame, let's say from a CSV file or from a SQL query, I do uh, look at the data using the head method. 
Okay, so we have this data frame and every column of this data frame is a series. So this is a special uh, gain. So this is an abstraction from pandas that data frame is a table and the table consists of multiple series and each column is a panda series. And if we want to access a particular series in a data frame, so if we just want to access this, uh, the column make, so we just use this dot notation, right? So we just uh, write uh, data frame dot make. Uh, another option is instead of using the dot notation, we use the brackets notation. So we specify the name uh, of the column we want to extract here um, and use the, the brackets. And it is the same. And uh, as you see, so here we have some columns that have uh, spaces in them. So we cannot really use dot notation here. It will now say, okay, I don't know what is that. Um, so for these cases, let's say when we have minuses or when we have uh, spaces there, the only way we can access the variable is using this brackets notation. Also, we can access multiple rows at the same time. So let's say if we want to get a subset of our data frame that contains only make, model, and price. So we, uh, what we do is we put a list inside brackets. So that's why we have these double brackets. And in this list, we say which columns we want to have. So in this case, we want to have make, model, and uh, price, and it returns uh, a data frame that has only these three columns, right? So it doesn't have anything else. Yeah, so this is our data frame. And let's say we want to add another column to this data frame. So let's say we want to, uh, to add a column called ID. So we can do this by uh, using this notation again, brackets, and uh, so if we just try to get ID, it says, okay, I don't know what is that. But we can say we can create a new column. And uh, this is how we do this. So we use the same notation as here. And we just say, okay, for this, we want to have a new column that we will call ID that contains numbers from one to five. This way we do this, and then now you see that there is a column called ID uh, that we can now extract. And we can actually also replace it if we want. So let's say we want to change it. Instead of uh, this, we want to have uh, a different, uh, different set of values. Okay. So now we replace it. If we want to delete a column, we use the del operator, which deletes uh, a, a column from this. So this is very similar to dictionaries. If we want to remove something from a dictionary, we use the del operator. And here we can do the same with pandas. And you see this column is gone. Yeah, so we talked about columns. And in data frame, maybe you see here, numbers here. So these are IDs of rows. So this is how we can refer to each row. And this is actually called index. Right? So if we look at the index, so we see that there is an index called range index that starts with zero. So this is the first one and uh, stops at five. Five is not um, inclusive like usually it's exclusive. Uh, so we have an index that goes from zero to four. All the series of this uh, data frame, they all have the same index. So let's say if we access make, you see, we have this, uh, again, these numbers here. These are the indices. This is the index of make. And again, if we try to access the index, we see this is the same index that the data frame has. So using this index, we can access the elements of the data frame. So, Let's say we have we want to access element one and two, then we use uh, lock. So lock stands for location, I think. So let's say if we want to get the element that is indexed by one, we use lock, and we get the row. So if you let me show it once again. So this is the 
this row indexed by one and we get this row here and then we also can return multiple rows see so we can uh, use this lock to get multiple rows and this is what we look at so this is the index we can actually replace this index so we can use something else so let's say if instead of that we want to use uh, some id so it could be a b c d e so now index is different you see this is what we use and this no longer works it says i don't know what you're talking about there are no records with these ids in the index so now we need to use let's say b and c to refer to these particular uh, records in the data frame we however still can refer to a positional index so this is usual index right and then there is a positional index and positional index this is what we usually use uh, in uh, in lists or uh, numpy arrays so this is like uh, when it refers to a position from uh, zero to four so this is what we previously had as a range a range index we still can refer to elements uh, using positional index except instead of lock we will need to use iloc so let's say if we want to get uh, element index by one we use iloc one and uh, again we can ask multiple elements and this is how we use it so if you see that the index is still the old index but we use the positional index to refer to the elements uh, to the records of this data frame and now we have this strange index right so let's say if we want to come back to the usual index which is uh, sequential coming from zero to one what we use is we use the function called reset index and yeah what it does it again uh, it resets the index to the sequential index and it keeps the the previous index and it creates a new column called index to keep the values from the old index and uh, if we let's say if we don't need the values of the old index we use this parameter called drop true which yeah, which drops the uh, the index and just keeps the new one actually this function doesn't change the the data frame so it creates a new data frame you see, you see so here the original data frame is still unchanged so here it returns a new data frame that has the same data but the new index so what we can do if we want to uh, completely forget about the old one we just reassign to to this df variable so we kind of overwrite the old data frame with a new one and yeah so now we have uh, we're back to the data frame we had okay so yeah i actually talked about accessing elements already so this was about uh, this uh, lock and i lock so now let's talk about element uh, by separations like in numpy we uh, remember in numpy when we have an array we can apply an operation to an array to all the elements of this array right so like for example if we multiply an array by two then all the elements of that array get multiplied by two so actually the same uh, we can do the same with pandas uh, so let's say we have this engine hp column let's say we want to divide it by 100 so this is how we do it this is exactly the same uh, as with numpy array so here yeah i didn't talk about this none so this is just denotes this denotes a missing number so for this uh, pro we don't know what is the engine horsepower so we just don't know this value is missing and when you divide so for this one it doesn't do anything but the rest uh, it divides the rest by 100 or you know, we can multiply it by two basically we can do everything we can do in numpy but here we operate on a uh, series from pandas not on uh, numpy arrays and the main difference between the two is that here you have uh, an index here you have a name but it's pretty much the same and uh, under the hood pandas actually uses numpy so and um, like uh, like in numpy we have uh, 
So like in pandas, uh, we can do this multiplication uh, and so on. Element-wise, we can also have some logical operators. So for example, if we want to find all the records that were created after uh, 2010, well, let's say 2015, right? So we see that uh, this, this, and these records were created after 2015. Um, so this is how we do this, right? So this is very similar to um, to NumPy. And again, um, so I'm already talking about filtering. So let's say if we want to look at all the records that were produced, uh, that were all the cars that were manufactured after year uh, 2015, this is how we do this. So there are two parts here. So the first part is uh, this part inside. Right, so this is the condition. So it returns a new series with a binary series with false and true values only. And uh, what this thing does here, it looks at the values that are true and returns only them. Right? And we have a new data frame, um, which contains only rows that were produced after 2012. And, uh, Let's say if we want to find all cars that are Nissan, uh, then we write something like this, make equals to Nissan. And then we have two cars that are manufactured by Nissan. We can actually combine uh, this. So let's say if we want to get cars that are manufactured by Nissan and, and produced, uh, after 2015, so this is what we do. We combine them uh, using this logical end uh, aberration. And yeah, it's just one record. Okay, so let's talk a bit about string operators. So this is something that uh, NumPy doesn't have. So NumPy is mostly used for processing numbers. And in pandas, we often have strings. So that's why uh, yeah, there, there are also a couple of useful things for manipulating strings. So let's take uh, vehicle style column. So this is a string and we see that uh, sometimes here, so this is sedan with capital S, this is sedan with um, lower uh, case letter. So yeah, it would be nice if we can somehow standardize it. So in Python, there is a, a function, there's a method from the string class called lower, which takes a string and turns it into lowercase. So let's say it turns capital case to lowercase and keeps um, lowercase letters. So we can, uh, what we want to do is we want to apply this function to every element of uh, the series. For that, we can use this uh, thing called str that allows to invoke string methods. Uh, on the entire uh, series. So we can do this. So we can say, let's apply the lower function on all the strings from here. And it gives us a lowercase. So you see like everything turned, all the capital letters turned into lowercase letters. Another thing we can do is we can replace all the spaces with uh, underscores. So because sometimes maybe you have underscores, sometimes you don't. So this is a typical pre-processing step when you work with text. In case of a usual string, let's say we have machine learning zoom comp, and then there is a method called replace. And then first it gets the character you want to replace. And then second is what you want to replace with, right? So you want to replace this one by this one. So, and then it uh, replaces all the occurrences of space by the underscore. So we want to uh, do the same here. So we can just copy this and apply it again using this str thing to all the elements of um, series. And you see, so here we have a space, here this space is uh, replaced by an underscore. And uh, we can actually chain this. So first we can, uh, so you see it, it's actually, it doesn't change it it returns a new series with the modification. So actually, see, even though we lowercase here, here it, say, it still stays 
capital case, right? So because it doesn't overwrite the series, it returns a new series with uh, new values. And we can actually chain them to first replace and then lowercase. And here we have something that is, um, let's say, more uniform. And then what we can do next is, uh, because this uh, data frame still has the old values. Right? So what we can do is we can replace them with this clean version. So for that, we use the assignment operator and we just overwrite this vehicle style, the value with the new, new value. And now if we look at the data frame, we see, oops, sorry. So we look at the data frame and the, we see that the values are overwritten. So next thing we will look at is summarizing operators. So like in uh, NumPy, we have this element wise operators and summarizing operators. Uh, the same thing, uh, yeah, we have the same summarizing operators in Pandas. So let's take at uh, the price, that's MSRP. So we have this price variable. So we again can look at the mean value, which is 2,000 uh, max value. So this is pretty much the same as we have in NumPy, um, right? And mean, for example, and this is the average number. Um, but uh, in addition to that, there is a useful um, function called describe, which reports all the useful statistics. So first it tells you how many records are there, like what is the size of this, um, what is the size of the series, what is the mean value, what is the standard deviation, what is the minimal. Then it also returns the, the percentiles, like 25th percentile, 75th percentile, and the max value. So it gives you uh, like a lot of uh, information. And we can actually do the same thing, but for the entire data frame. So we can just call describe on the data frame. And what it does, it looks at, it finds all the numerical columns. So we have four numerical columns here. We have year, engine, horsepower, engine cylinders, and price. So for all the variables, for all the columns that are numeric, so of course it cannot compute the mean value of model or make, so it can only look at numerical values. So it looks at all the numerical values and computes uh, these uh, summary statistics for them. So this is useful. And uh, yeah, so what I also often do is I use round here to just look at, uh, to round it uh, up to two decimal points. So it makes it a bit more compact. There are some things we can also do for uh, string uh, for strings, or we call them categorical uh, variables. So for columns with strings. So let's say we have this uh, make column, right? And we want to understand how many unique values are there. So we see that, for example, there are two Nissans, but the rest are unique. So if we want to calculate how many unique values are there, we use this n unique function and you just say, okay, here are four unique values. And actually we can apply it so to the entire data frame. And then it will tell us how many unique values are there for all the columns of the data frame. So there are four unique values for make. There are so basically for every, so there are only two transmission types. So it's manual or automatic. Yeah. So you can get a, a summary. Then uh, we mentioned that there is one here, this uh, NAN, which is a missing value. And uh, when it comes to machine learning, we don't want to have these missing values. Right? So we want to know how many of them and we want to do something with them. So for that, we can uh, use this is null function that returns a, another data frame, a new data frame, where for each cell, it says true if uh, a value is missing. You see, we have this true here. And it says false if the value is not missing. So only one, only one cell has a missing value. That's why it has uh, uh, true here and the rest uh, are not missing. So this is not always uh, super useful. So what we can do now is we want to understand 
appear each column, how many missing values are there. And for that, we call the sum method. And when we do that, we, uh, so it sums across columns. So it applies the sum to each column. And uh, then it tells uh, how many missing values are there in each column. So and you see that uh, there is one for engine horsepower and the rest are not missing. So we are almost over. So there's uh, two things that I want to talk about. The so first is grouping. So is one, we want to do something like group by. So if you know SQL, let's say if we have a query like that, let me type it. So let's say we have a query like that. Uh, and um, if you know SQL, so let me translate this query to human language. So we want to group by, we want to, yeah, so we want to compute the average price per transmission type. So we want to see what is the mean price for all the manual uh, transmission types for, and for all the automatic transmission types. So we basically want to first group by transmission type and then within each group, we want to compute the average number. So for in SQL, it will look like that. So this is a query that we would write in SQL and let's translate this query to pandas now. So in pandas, we have a method called group by and here we specify what we want to group by, which column, this variable transmission type, right? So we want to group by it. So yeah, this is what we write here group by transmission type. And then uh, we have this me MR, MSRP variable, which is price. It's manufacturer suggested retail price, price or just price. And then we want to compute the mean number. Or let's say if you want to compute the minimum number or the maximum number. So this is how you do this. Uh, Everything in pandas is backed by NumPy. So let's say if we have so this uh, MSRP, right? So which is uh, a series. If we want to get the underlying NumPy array, we just use the values field and it returns uh, the underlying uh, NumPy array. Then the last useful thing uh, I want to show you is uh, we have this data frame. And for creating this data frame, we used uh, a list of uh, dictionaries, right? So this is what we used for creating it. And sometimes you need to convert a pandas data frame back to this form, back to a list of dictionaries. And for this, what you do is uh, use a function called to dict, and then you specify that uh, you want to do this per record. So orient value is records and it gives you a list with dictionaries that you can do something with them like you can save it to a file or something like this so it's pretty useful and in the next uh, video it will not be a lesson just a video with a summary of everything we learned uh, during this session so see you soon